so in this last part, we're going to do perimeter and area of circles. So the, before we do circles, we just need a few um, things that we need before, you know, some notation and vocabulary. So the first thing is a circle represents all of the a uh, set of points, all of which are the same distance away from the center. So here's a circle and here's the center. And the circle says that here is the distance from the center to the edge. And that is going to be an infinite number of points. And if you get these points all close enough, they make up this nice circle, right? So it's just like going like this with like a, maybe a rubber band and having your pencil here and then going like that and you make a certain nice circle. Well, that distance from the center to the edge is called the radius. So the radius is just a distance from the center to the edge. And a diameter is just twice the radius. So it's the distance through the center from one edge to the other. Okay. I think that's good enough. So now we can go into the area and perimeter. So the perimeter of a circle we call the circumference. And the reason why we call it the circumference is if you look at those first four letters, circ, hence circle, and then circumference. So we call that a perimeter. And essentially, the perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So if I started at the radius and to the edge, right, if I, walk, if I was a little ant, and I was like, hey, and then walked to the edge, and then walked all the way around in a circle, if I calculated that distance, that would be the perimeter. And since the circle isn't a well-defined shape like a line is, um, we have to use a irrational number called pi. And many of you know and seen pi, um, especially in a previous chapter. So we have 2 pi r. The area, again, it's like it, the edges don't really matter. It's just the boundary. And then I paint all inside the circle. The area is pi r squared. Okay, so if I'm given the circle below and I see that the radius, meaning the distance from the center to the edge, is 5 kilometers, I can find the diameter, the circumference, and the area. Okay, so the first one would be the diameter. The diameter is going to be twice the radius, so that's going to be 2 times 5 kilometers. Now notice that I'm just doing 2 times 5 is 10. The 2 doesn't have any units, so it just stays 10 kilometers. The second part is the perimeter, or the circumference, which is um, c equals 2 pi r. So 2 pi, and then the radius is 5 kilometers. So notice that radius is really popular. Okay, so 5 times 2 times pi is 10 pi kilometers. So here, I don't usually say, like, you know, how long, how far did you run? Oh, I ran 10 pi kilometers. It's like we don't say 10 pi, right? So we go to our calculator and we say, okay, 10 times. And then the pi symbol is right here. Here's the second button. It's one, two, three buttons below the second button. And then hit enter. And so we'll go ahead and just round to one decimal place past the decimal. So um, this is the test digit one. It's below five, so it'll stay 31.4 kilometers. So notice circumference is like perimeter. So the units of the radius is the units of the circumference. It's when we get to area that it'll make a little bit of a difference. So the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. 
So that'll be pi, the radius is 5 kilometers, and squared. So we have 5 squared is 25 pi, and then kilometers squared is, that's where the square kilometers come from for area. Of course, when you ask me, how much did you paint? You don't say 25 pi squared kilometers, right? We go 25 times pi, oops, and we can round to one decimal place. We see the three is the test digit. It's less than five, so it'll be 78.5 square kilometers. Now, I know that many of you may use 3.14 as your pi, um, but we're in, you know, a higher level math course, so we're just going to grow out of that 3.14 and actually just use our pi button on our calculator. The pi button is usually on this left far column right under that second button. So if you're using a different calculator that's similar, just look under the second button here and go down until you see that pi symbol. And this pi symbol should give you a decimal. If it doesn't, then um, you would just go into your mode and make sure that it's in classic mode and normal mode. If you put it in math print, um, I, it will just leave it as a pi and won't give a decimal representation. So let me show that. Um, if I did 25 pi, it will keep it as pi, and 25 times pi keeps it as 25 pi. So again, to get the decimal representation, you would want to make sure that your calculator under mode was in classic. And then hit second mode, and it gives you quit. And then it'll give you the decimal representation of the number. OK. So let's go ahead and try this perimeter of area of this shape. So we'll notice that we do have this invisible barrier here. And we notice that this upper half is actually a semicircle, meaning half a circle. Um, I do see that this is a um, rectangle bottom. So I do know that this bottom here is 42 inches. And here, 20 inches is this length, so 20 inches is that length. If 20 inches is the diameter of the semicircle, then certainly 10 inches is going to be the radius of the semicircle. All right, I think we're about done, so let's go ahead and do um, one eye, which is perimeter. So to find the perimeter, Remember, it's just the sum of the sides. Well, recall here that the sides were this piece. Let me highlight that in blue. So it's here, the semicircle, and then here. Okay, recall that this little piece here I put there as a placeholder. It doesn't belong there. Okay, so I'm only going to be adding the sum of the sides. So the perimeter will be the perimeter of this piece here with an open top because again that there is no top to the rectangle plus the perimeter of the semicircle and again no bottom right okay so let's go ahead and do that so the perimeter of the rectangle with no top is going to be 42 plus um inches plus 42 inches plus 20 inches plus the perimeter of the semicircle which is going to be again the circumference which is 2 pi r but a semicircle is going to be one half that right one half 2 pi r and so 1 half times 2 pi r gives you just pi r. OK, so I'm going to highlight this a little bit. So this one is this. And this one will be this one. 
which will be pi and then times the radius, which is 10 inches. So here we get 42 plus 42, which is 84, and 84 plus 20 is 104 inches plus 10 pi inches. Okay, so um, again, um, perimeter is the same units as the original unit, so we're going to leave everything in inches and we're just going to add in our calculator 104 plus 10 pi. And it gives us a nice little decimal and we'll round to the tenths place as usual and we get 135.4. inches. So that's the perimeter of your nice little cool shape. And the only here the only extra step here was the fact that we had a semicircle. And so we just cut the circumference in half for a semicircle. So when we do area, we're going to do the same thing and we're going to cut the um semicircle in half, right? And do half of the area. We don't want the area of the whole circle. We just want area of half the circle. So when we do area, we'll have area again um, for the rectangle and then add the area of the semicircle. So again, area doesn't really matter because we just need the boundaries and right and because we're like painting, right, the space. So area here for the rectangle will be base times height, so 42 times 20, so 42 inches times 20 plus, and then let me go ahead and do that first part in pink and the second part in green. And then the area of the semicircle will be one half, right, pi r squared. And the radius was 10 inches and then squared. So over here, remember the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so a semicircle area is one half the pi r squared. So we'll go ahead and um, multiply one half times that pi r squared. Now um, again we have 42 inches times 20 inches which is 840 inches times inches is square inches plus one half pi ten squared. So let's go ahead and just do that in the calculator. We'll just do one half um, pi and then r squared. And that square button is right next to that seven. So I get 157 Point, and then want, be careful here because remember this is the tens place. So 7 is our test digit which is larger than 5 so it will be 157.1. And inches squared is exactly that square inches. So now we've multiplied. Now we're just adding right like terms. So let's just add these together. So we'll have 840 plus 157.1. And then 997.1 square inches. So the area of this shape is going to be 997, 997.1 square inches. Okay, and again, the only the only little hiccup that you might find is a semicircle. And essentially, all you have to do is just chop the circumference in half and chop the area in half. 
Okay, so the last example here is going to actually include that edge of the semicircle. Notice before we didn't have this edge here and now we do. So this is going to be part our of our perimeter of the semicircle and triangle because if I was an ant walking along this ice cream cone, I would have to cross that four feet somewhere. Whereas in this other example up here, recall that I didn't have an edge on the semicircle. So I never included it. It was always open top, open bottom. Here, it will not be. It'll be inclusive. So it only makes a difference with the triangle. So the perimeter of this triangle will be um, the sum of the edges, which would be the perimeter of the triangle plus the perimeter of the semicircle. Now, if the whole piece here is four feet, this means that the radius of the semicircle has to be what? That's right, two feet. And we're going to need that radius, right? Okay, so the perimeter would be six feet plus six feet plus four feet. We want that whole triangle. And I'll just kind of do a little, that's what that is. And then the semicircle, we have to use the radius, right? We have to use one half of two pi r, which is two feet. And I'll make that in green. Okay, um, and then so I get 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16 feet plus, and again, um, this works out nicely, right, because the 2's reduce out and I'm left with 2 pi feet. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this in the calculator, you know me. So 16 plus 2 pi is equal to 22 point, and then again, eight is our test digit, which is larger than five, so it'll be 22.3 feet. Okay, great, so that wasn't that bad, right? And so the next part is area. So area is going to be the area of that triangle plus the area of the semicircle. Now the area of the semicircle won't be bad because we're just using that radius again, right? But the triangle is gonna give us a little bit of trouble here because we need the height, right? Because remember the triangle is half a quadrilateral and the area of a rectangle is base times height, so we need half of that. And so here is the height. Right, and I do have two of the legs. I have two and I have two here, and I have six here, and I have a right triangle, and there's the height. And so let me rewrite this down here a little bit and so you can see what I have. Two feet, the hypotenuse is six feet, and this is the height I'm looking for. So what can I use? Hmm. If you even thought about Pythagorean Theorem, you are so right, because that's exactly what we're going to use. So the first thing we have to do in order to find this piece here is to find the height. Once I get the height, I can do base times height, take half of it, right, because that's a triangle, and then the semicircle I'm okay with. So if I wanted to do the this first, right, so then I know that 2 squared plus h squared is equal to 6 squared, and 4 plus h squared is equal to 36. And that means that h squared is equal to 32. And then h must be the square root of 32. So here I'm going to have the square root of 32. Um, and I'll just leave it like that for now because um, remember, like I'm, a, I'm just going to do everything in the calculator in the end, and I'd rather just round in the end versus right now. So if I wanted to do the area of the triangle, it would be 1 half base, which is 4 feet, 
times height, which is the square root of 32, whatever that is. I'm going to put it in the calculator, okay? I don't want you to get nervous. Feet. So again, this is this part, okay? Plus the area of the semicircle. So that would be 1 half pi r squared, and the radius is 2 feet squared. Okay, so then I get 1 half times 4, that reduces to 2, so then I get 2 times the square root of 32 feet squared, plus, and then uh, 1 half pi times 4 square feet. So if I were to do this in the calculator, I would have 2 square root 32 square feet plus, and then the 1 half and the 4 reduce out, and I'm left with 2 pi square feet. And then I'll just put this in the calculator. I don't want to do too much algebra, right? Like we're not in algebra class. So let's go 2 and then second square root, which is right here. 32, and then plus 2 pi. And I just like to round in the end. That's the only reason why. You can round sooner, but then you like risk not getting like this little remainder answer. <sighs> okay, so um, here notice the 9 is above 5, so we're going to round this up to 17.6. So 17.6 square feet. Is the area of the ice cream cone shape. So the only part that mattered um, that was a little different is that we included this border here into the perimeter. But other than that it was similar to this previous example um, where all we did was take this semicircle and cut it in half, right, and then added it. Other than that, um, it's just one border is included into the perimeter. So the border is going to matter in the perimeter part, but not the area, because you're just painting. You just need no boundaries. And the units on area is square feet or square units, and the perimeter keeps the units of the dimensions. Um, and the only fun part here that we had to do extra was finding that height of the triangle. So again, we noticed like we started with angles and then triangles and then quadrilaterals. So we did all this to build up to this where we could find area and perimeter of these shapes but have to use those properties that we learned in the very beginning of angles and the triangles and the Pythagorean theorem, right? And so, um, so everything has value to it in this chapter that we've used so far.